So traditionally with standards and guidelines, um, they are written by physicians and geared towards physicians. And we wanted to change that all around. Um, we wanted the patient in the center. So instead, the focus is what is the experience of the patient from diagnosis all the way through survivorship? And then how can the care team um, basically meet the needs of the patient during that process? And not just the medical needs, but the social needs, um, the emotional needs, um, everything that the patient and their family is going through through their breast cancer journey. What this does is it causes them to refocus on what it's like to be a patient going through this and to identify barriers to good care and timely care and look at it from a fresh perspective. Be less concerned about filling out paperwork and, find, and writing policies and more concerned with what are the barriers to care for our patients. I do think that there is much more of a focus now on the patient experience and patient reported outcomes. And I, this is coming uh, mainly from the patients, but, and I think what has happened through the years as patients have talked with uh, their constituents, with regulatory bodies and said, you know, we need to focus more of the care on what the patient is going through and what they're experiencing their function, their psychosocial well-being, their just general overall quality of life that just hasn't been enough of a focus on that. So uh, Medicare, different payers, even different providers are focusing much more on the patient journey and for all the right reasons. And that is a lot of the reason why we decided that we would dedicate a large section of our standards just to the patient journey and focusing on patient reported outcomes. Well, we always thought that we're putting the patient's needs first. When we really started to think about it, we started to look at things like, what's it like to become a patient? What's it like to be waiting for a report? What's it like to be waiting for treatment? They're not understanding it, having to explain this to family. It's critically important that everyone who, has to, who deals with patients, particularly in breast cancer, take all those things into consideration and are able to place ourselves uh, in their shoes and knock down any obstacles to them getting the best care that supports all their needs, including their emotional needs, as well as their physical needs. One of the standards that truly represents the essence of the changes we're trying to make with regards to the patient journey is the survivorship standard. I think a lot of people think survivorship starts when cancer treatment ends. And in speaking with our patient advocates and our experts in the field, really it's trying to convey that survivorship starts even before diagnosis. So as you look at the standards, you'll see that there are survivorship uh, points woven throughout all of the patient journey. Um, an example of that would be um, understanding the social and behavioral determinants of health of a, of a patient or you know, understanding frailty and, um, and identifying um, things that would be a barrier to care for that patient, um, either during the workup or during treatment. Um, for example, um, somebody has the inability to move their arm and that's gonna prevent them from having adequate radiation treatments or somebody develops lymphedema and that's gonna impact their life unless we can detect that early. Um, so the survivorship standard really starts at the very beginning and is woven all of the way uh, through. And we ask our care team to look for barriers that would prevent um, a good patient experience and effective treatment. I think an important element that we focused on in our standards is shared decision making. And we really focus on this throughout the patient journey, the importance of incorporating the patient into the decision making process, understanding their perspective and making decisions, and the importance of communicating with patients during the whole process, communicating results, communicating treatment plans, and making sure patients understand their treatment plan. 
these are all elements that are very important to the patient journey. We really hope that sites learn from each other about this patient-centered journey and learn from our standards. We're providing a framework for sites to provide patient-centered care. And I do hope in the future that we can create a robust learning environment for our sites and that our sites can share with each other their experiences with the patient-centered journey so they can help each other and sites can learn from each other how best to provide truly high quality patient-centered care. When we speak to care teams, it's obvious that they want to provide the best care for their patients. So I hope that by embracing the new NAPBC standards, centers will restructure their resources to focus on providing the highest quality care, eliminating barriers to prevent that care, and really think about treating patients the way they would want their family members to be treated. I think it's likely that um, these standards will drive new ways that the centers will approach the patients that they're taking care of. I think uh, good research as to whether or not these standards made a difference will be important. But honestly, we do very well with breast cancer. And so I'm not sure that we'll find survival advantages. What I'd like to find is that the patients are more satisfied that they move through this more expediently and are more comfortable and um, come at it uh, after their treatment and getting back to their normal lives. This will cause the centers to start thinking about the people they treat in a more focused way.